On Authentic Ag, we take a look back at the 2019 marketing year with Arlen Suderman, INTLFC Stone. Many challenges, and he'll talk about how we got through the year, and we also have features from several commodity groups and some ag information that you should know about. I'm Ken Rogers. Stay with us for this edition of Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org. And the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. news from agview.net the epa issued a proposal interim decision on atrazine which is a widely used herbicide in sorghum and corn epa administrator andrew wheeler said with common sense action they're protecting the health of the nation and ensuring the crops like corn and sorghum and sugarcane as well as hemp can be protected against a broad spectrum of weeds and pests under the administration, the EPA committed, he said, to providing much-needed certainty to farmers and ranchers across the country who rely on crop protection tools to ensure a global supply of products while driving economic growth in agriculture communities across America. Well, the biodiesel tax credit has been extended retroactively from January 1st of 2018 through December 31st of 2022. The $1 per gallon break for biodiesel producers added to that fiscal year 2020 appropriation agreement. Iowa's Chuck Grassley has said after years of uncertainty for many Americans, we've finally come to an agreement on the future of these temporary tax policies. Many people, he said, in his state, farmers and processors alike, can breathe a sigh of relief that Congress will extend the biodiesel tax credit retroactively through the year 2022. And policymakers in Washington uh, started the year with a blitz of activity on trade, immigration reform, and all that, and finally ended up at the end of the year, but setting up some significant milestones for the U.S. economy and the rural economy, even in the ag sector this coming year, according to the latest Rural Economic Review from Cobank's Knowledge Exchange Division. 2020 starts with limited U.S.-China trade deal, ratification of USMCA. Immigration reform also cleared the House and could be law in this first quarter. The primary uh, phase one trade deal with China likely will add some level of certainty for businesses that are looking to invest. We're still waiting for some more specific details, but the biggest winners uh, seem to be grain and animal protein as well as dairy. Volatile weather, trade tensions, and strong U.S. dollar were key themes impacting grain and oilseed exports and production in the fourth quarter of 2019. Corn and soybean prices weakened, while wheat prices rose as USDA's resurvey of certain spring wheat crops led to a downward revision of production. A challenging fall harvest in the heartland and slow grain exports will give way to increased planting for corn and soybeans in 2020, they say. Optimism over the Phase 1 China deal should benefit producers and input suppliers and exporters as well. So you can find more information online, kansasagreport.net. When we return, a review of the year that was, and look ahead with markets. Arlen Suderman, INTL FC Stone. Stay with us. 
Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide. And Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets? Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. And joining us now is Arlen Suderman, who is with uh, FC Stone, INT. INTL FC Stone. The INTL FC Stone, there we go. I, I knew we'd get all those initials in, but uh, Arlen, always it's great to catch up with you. And uh, as we kind of look at the broad range of uh, what's going on, looking at 2019, uh, is there a way to describe all the highs and lows of what uh, 2019 brought us? You know, in four decades of working in agriculture, it's probably one of the most challenging and the most fascinating from an observer standpoint, most frustrating from a producer and an end user standpoint as well. Everything that we've thrown at these uh, markets uh, between the weather problems, the production problems, the China up and downs of the trade relations and everything. Very frustrating, and it continues to be so with so much of the crop still in the field. Well, and that's the thing. This is kind of the harvest that never ends. We thought many in the Midwest would be uh, spending the holidays in the field. Looks like there were some windows to get that uh, completed, but uh, you know, our, just our thoughts go out to those in the north that uh, you know they got it in the spring, they had it in the fall, and uh, uh, you know, it, it kind of it bleeds over to all of us, really. Yeah, and you need to have enough protein to dry it. Um, not only corn, but even we're dealing with some soybeans that are having trouble drying down. But uh, it's been one of those frustrating years, not only the ground being muddy, but uh, then the corn being wet as well. Yeah. All right, uh, Ward, we always like to talk to you too about uh, our friend, uh, uh, the, the great wheat crop. Uh, uh, it looks like, I guess, what are you looking at as we look at 2020? it seems to be that there may be some opportunity uh, as we go into winter. There does seem to be. Um, we've got a short crop in Australia. USDA I don't think is fully recognizing that yet. Um, we've got a shorter crop in Argentina than what I think they're looking at. Um, we're starting to see tight, supplies tighten up in the Black Sea. It's dry in parts of the Black Sea region, but it's too early to really say too much about that. Mm -hmm. They could have a good spring right. and still get a good crop. Um, we've had some very cold temperatures of late that may have done a little bit of damage to some of the hard red winter wheat, but overall this crop is starting off incredibly average. When you look at the national mm -hmm. numbers, um, the planting went in about on an average pace, the emergence, the condition of the crop, everything's incredibly average. Nothing there really to stimulate the market, so really looking for that demand to pick up and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see that seasonally here in the months ahead. Incredibly average. I mean, that's uh, that's that's. A, we have to make sure we give you credit for that as well. So, Arden Suderman is joining us with INTL FC Stone. We're going to take a break. Talk livestock in just a moment.
Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets? Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. Arden Suderman with INTL FC Stone joins us and uh, as we look at the uh, livestock trade it's almost kind of like grains you go 2019 oh let's just look at 2020. Absolutely African swine fever continues to be the central story it has not played out the way many producers wanted to expect it it's fairly well the way that we anticipated we thought that we'd see those exports ramp up in the fourth quarter they have maybe not to the extent yet that we expect and i think a lot of that is because um, the buyers of the pork that a lot of that pork's been bought but they keep thinking well we're so close to a phase one trade agreement when the tariffs can be lifted let's wait to ship it and see if those tariffs get lifted that make a big difference but on the other hand you look at that uh, China lifting the restrictions on U.S. poultry. That's an indication where China has been aggressively going around the world and lifting restrictions wherever they had them, trying to get poultry, beef, pork, all the above, just showing the desperate situation with double-digit food inflation in China because of African swine fever. At the uh, livestock, uh, the cattle sector that is, uh, it's been kind of a story of the starts and stops. It has been. Um, but one of the encouraging things to me is, is when you look at this product market, very strong product market, and uh, particularly some of the, uh, the lower cuts, um, which I think are indicative of what we're seeing on the world market, is buyers and globally are starting to worry about this tightening protein supply and looking at alternative meats, and now it's starting to work its way into the U.S. beef product market. Uh, let's talk about uh, the alternative meat market. And, and, and who knows, a year from now, uh, Arlen, we could see uh, either it continuing to be a bigger discussion point or it was a blip on the screen. When we look at the overall picture, not only with the proteins, but even into the commodities, because some are saying, so the soy base doesn't taste too bad. We've got this huge corn to, you know, to supply to get rid of. Uh, so, so talk about how that plays, or is it something that doesn't play at all? Uh, you know, the fascinating thing is, it's all about perception, and the, the millennials love the thought of an alternative meat, not really paying attention to all of the additives that go in it, which they are supposedly against as well. Uh, so I think it's longer than a year. I think in a year we'll be looking at continual growth. I do think it's something that uh, will eventually, they'll start looking at the other side of it, um, say, look at everything that's in the products in order to make it like meat or whatever. Um, but for now, I think it is a legitimate uh, concern for the meat industry. Fortunately, the African swine fever is increasing demand offset that. But when that day comes and African swine fever is gone, we're going to need that demand. All right, Arnold. Well, always good to catch up with you. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you down the road at these meetings and uh, keep it up. So thanks for giving us a scoop of what's going on. Thank you, Ken. Arden Suderman with INTL FC Stone has joined us. Stay with us. More coming up. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families in rural Kansas for more than 100 years. We're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. 
Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotator cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there was a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and take trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities, and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. So we're really excited to host our third annual Kansas Corn Symposium. And with that, it's at the K-State Alumni Center on January 23rd. And we'll be having a, a variety of different um, events and topics to cover, but we're inviting all corn farmers and industry representatives that would like to come and get an in-depth update. So it starts off at 1.30 or 2 o'clock with our annual meeting for the association where we will vote on and update any policy and priorities as um, dictated by our members. And and also elect um, our three board members for the northern three regions. Um, we will then move into a panel that we're really excited about focused on Mexico. So we're going to have a representative from U.S. Grains Council as well as U.S. Meat Export Federation um, talking about the projects that we have invested in as the Kansas Corn Checkoff with the Corn Commission in Mexico through those partners. We're also going to have a Mexican consular from the Kansas City office, Consular Navarro, that will be talking about why trade with Mexico is important from the Mexican standpoint as well. Um, we'll move into celebrations for our yield contest winners, our Corn Corps graduates, as well as our Collegiate Academy graduates. Um, we'll also have an update on our K-12 education programs and um, what we're doing in the world of ethanol. So big afternoon, we'll move into a reception that we bring in our researchers that we're currently working on funding projects with and then have a dinner and a celebration. Earlier in that day, we're going to start um, for the first time a risk management workshop. This is designed to truly be a workshop for farmers that either currently have a risk management plan or need to start building one. Um, you can go to kscorn.com event and you can find all of our events that we have going on this winter there and we hope to see uh, many folks out in, on January 23rd in Manhattan. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if your cattle get out, you could be held liable for that? Call me, let's have a discussion. 316-945-6733. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Great Plains Analytical Laboratory, Serial Ingredients, Inc., and their CEO, Robert Hatch, have provided a significant donation to the Kansas Wheat Commission Research Foundation in support of impactful wheat research. 
The gift will be directed toward ongoing research aimed at developing wheat varieties that result in high quality baked goods. Hatch is chairman and CEO of Cereal Ingredients Inc., a specialty food ingredients manufacturer he founded in 1990, and CEO of Great Plains Analytical Laboratory, which was founded as a response to a need in the grain, flour, baking, and food industries for a high level of service, response time, and expertise. The Kansas Wheat Commission prides itself in directing farmer checkoff dollars to research that results in high yielding and high quality wheat varieties. For more than 50 years, the KWC has provided funding for K-State wheat breeders. For eight of the past 10 years, that dollar amount has exceeded $1.1 million. The Kansas Wheat Commission Research Foundation differs from the wheat checkoff. While the checkoff does fund wheat research, it is also used for marketing, promotion, and education. Donations to the KWC Research Foundation will be used only for wheat research. Through its Fields Forward campaign, the Kansas Wheat Commission Research Foundation is raising funds to further wheat research efforts that increase the profitability of farmers while improving the quality of wheat for millers, bakers, and consumers. Recent technological breakthroughs in wheat genetics research will allow researchers to accelerate delivery of high-value traits to the market. The recently completed reference map of the bread wheat genome, in conjunction with emerging technologies like gene editing, will assist in identification and integrations of high-quality end-use traits into new wheat varieties. This gift will be used to help support this research. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotator cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there was a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I wanted to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and take trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities, and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. Kansas Livestock Association members approved policy for 2020 during the organization's annual convention in December. Ranchers, feeders, and dairymen provided input during the roundtable meetings last fall and committee and council meetings at the convention, with final approval coming from the general membership. KLA members amended existing policy to oppose allowing fake meat and dairy products and lab-grown meat to inappropriately use nomenclature culture associated with actual meat and dairy products. In addition, the policy supports legislative, regulatory, or judicial action to protect consumers by ensuring fake meat and dairy products and lab-grown meat are labeled accurately. A new resolution regarding stock water facility permits was approved by the membership. The policy supports a permit that would allow an individual water right to exceed the annual authorized quantity of the individual water right as long as the facility's total authorized quantity was not exceeded and did not impair a senior water right from the same local source of supply. Members reaffirmed a resolution focused on the protection of private property rights in the use of eminent domain. 
The policy supports legislative, judicial, and administrative initiatives to prevent the use of eminent domain powers by governmental entities as a tool to protect private property from one party and transfer to another party for profit or private gain. Other issues addressed in KLA policy range from the lesser prairie chicken to animal health to noxious weeds. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Imagine turning soybean oil, used cooking oils, and waste animal fats into fuel so amazing it drives U.S. jobs and our economy forward. Learn more about biodiesel at americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Good morning. Mitch Dewar here with Paragon Ag Advisors. Over the past couple weeks, we have experienced some upside in the grain sector. This move is due in part to China and the U.S. agreeing to phase one of a new trade deal. With the grain markets off the lows, both traders and producers are looking to the January 10th USDA report for some direction. In the livestock sector, feeder cattle have been trading sideways and live cattle have been trading sideways to slightly higher. However, over the past month, the choice and select box beef cutout values have been decreasing with the choice select spread narrowing. Hogs are up roughly $6 off their most recent lows. 2019 had its fair share of ups and downs, and as it comes to an end, here are some observations. For the grain sector, we had late plantings, corn hit a new five-year high, KC wheat made a new 14-year low, and soybeans made a new 10-year low. In livestock, we had the Tyson plant fire, which took fat cattle to a nine-year low, and the African swine fever, which drove hog prices up to five-year highs. What will 2020 bring? Please give us a call here at 888-452-8751 to discuss your marketing plan moving forward. I'm Mitch Dewar with Paragon Ag Advisors. Well, thank you for joining us for Authentic Ag. If you have questions or comments, send them to me, Ken Rogers at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week at the same time for Authentic Ag. Have a great weekend. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. ValleyVet.com, ValleyVet.com, Valley Vet Supply. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net.